In our trip through Total War Three Kingdoms, we've looked at the history of the Three Kingdom period, how relationships can be both messy and helpful, and how armies are recruited. In our fifth and final episode, we're going to be taking a look at how those armies can crush their enemies on the battlefield, and how heroes, just by challenging an opponent to a duel, can turn the tide of a battle, securing victory with their fancy swordplay. But let's start with the basics. Winning a battle in Three Kingdoms is still about using your units to best effect, and that's all about matchups and counters, making sure you're pointing each of your units at enemies they're custom built to defeat. So, spearmen are your principal counter to cavalry. All units, when stood still, get the bracing effect, meaning they'll get knocked around less and maintain formation better when they're charged. But when spearmen braced, they get a special bonus called charge reflection versus mounted. The faster you run towards a pointy stick, the worse it's going to hurt, and that's precisely how spearmen work. Sword and axemen are great all-rounders, and your main assault troops. They'll iron chef their way through spearmen till evensong, but they don't fare so well when charged by cav. Top tip, axemen are also great at chopping through barricades in towns and cities, and they love it, so everybody wins. Archers are good against pretty much everything that doesn't carry a shield, but they're weak as kittens in combat. Their lack of melee focus and looser spacing means they're especially vulnerable to cav, so keep some spearmen nearby to deter any roaming GGs. It's also worth noting that crossbows do extra armor-piercing damage, so if you have them, point them at the enemy's elite and heavy units. Cavalry are hella fast and hit like a freight train on the charge, making them the most versatile unit in your arsenal. They're great for outflanking an army to threaten its archers, harassing routing troops until they're shattered, and kiting enemy spearmen out of the front line. But perhaps their most powerful use is to perform flank and rear charges against enemy units you've already pinned in place with your sword or spearmen. They'll pay out damage in spades and take little in return, but perhaps more importantly, they'll deal a solid morale shock to the enemy unit and reduce the time it takes to rout them. In Romance mode, characters play a massive role. Battle-focused heroes can take on entire units by themselves, and their special abilities can help wreck or rout those units. Characters are also great at taking down other characters in single combat, though it's wise to check how likely your guy is to beat the other guy. The only character class who won't duel is the Strategist, but they're still worth fielding as they unlock new formations for the units in your army. When a hero falls, all the units in his retinue will take a morale hit. If the overall general of an army falls, the entire army and any allied armies in the field will also take a hit. So, focusing your efforts on cutting the head off the snake is one of the best ways to effect a chain route across the opposing force and drawing the fight to an early close. With the battle over, that's the end of our guided tour through Total War Three Kingdoms and Ancient China. You'll be able to find out how you stack up to the heroes fighting over the Fractured Empire when Total War Three Kingdoms launches on May 23rd.